Hello and a warm welcome to the Sweet Spot, your go-to golf tipping show brought to you by The Racing Post. It's Jack Reeve and it's Steve Palmer to look back on three events and also look ahead to three events. It was a successful week for Steve Palmer on the last edition of The Sweet Spot. We're hoping for more of the same today. Steve, we, we talk about roller coaster rides in golf betting and I think last week was exactly that. It was. It was the usual highs and lows. I mean, we had agony in Madrid. We had despair in Jeddah. And then uh, we hit the jackpot in Vegas. So, um, yeah, it all's well that ends well, I'd say. There was a moment, wasn't there, on Sunday when, you know, the dream was definitely alive. Ram was on the charge through the first six. DJ w was within a couple of shots of the lead in, in, yeah. in Jeddah. And, and we knew that Tom Kim was, you know, upcoming. And, and we knew his... His talent, um, and he of course went on to win the Shriners. But there was a moment where we were thinking, "Hello, could this could this treble be successful here?" Yeah, I agree. Yeah, on Sunday morning when Ram got on the charge, I was getting a little bit excited about the treble. Um, but we just had to regret that Friday, didn't we? He, he, he putted so badly on the Friday. It was an absolute stinker. A one over par 72 on the Friday afternoon. I had exactly the same tea time as John Ram on the Friday afternoon. I got the clubs out for the first time in a long while. Um, so I thought that was an omen. The, I, was, I, was, I was playing at Wentworth with, with Wayne Mardle, the Arras oh, legend. Wow. I, was having, I was having a whale of a time, but I was, uh, the one thing dragging me down was checking my phone. And every time I checked my phone, John Rahm had missed a putt. I mean, I know you were following it as well, but it, 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 was, it was an ice cold putter. And that Friday afternoon left him with a mountain to climb. Uh, he played well on the other three days. And then particularly on the Sunday, six under par through eight holes, wasn't it? I was, I was, I was thinking, my word, like he, he was going single figure prices again um, in running. And I was thinking the comeback's on. And then, as you say, DJ was playing well. Um, but yeah, yeah, the Spanish Open in the end was a great disappointment because Ram petered out over the over the back nine. And then Marcus Helikilder, our backup selection, had a five footer for a place on the 18th hole, missed the five footer. So they both finished tied ninth. Um, yeah, yeah, we, 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 we'd like to forget about Madrid in a hurry. What, was Mr. Mardle following you in on the on the selections? Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, I, I think he's more of a greyhound punter. His biggest bets are on greyhounds, so he has a few fun bets on the on the golf. But um, yeah, yeah, I putted as badly as John Rahm, but then I'm supposed to, aren't I? <laughs> let's 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 start with our winner. Let's start on a high point in, in the Shriners, Tom Kim, who. You know, we raved about last year and we will continue to rave about a few stats for you, Steve. I'm sure you're well aware of them. Um, Kim yeah. becomes the youngest player since Tiger Woods to win three PGA Tour titles. He's the youngest player since 1912 to defend the recognised PGA Tour title. He's up to 11th in the world. I mean, this man is the real deal. Yeah, it makes me smile. Yeah, if you get any statistical comparison to Tiger Woods, then you, you're doing something right. And you, yeah, I'm in love with Thomas the Tank Engine. You know, he was unstoppable on Sunday. He's a fitting champion for the Children's Open, isn't he? Because he is a kid himself, 21 <laughs> years of age. He sits at home watching Thomas the Tank Engine. He likes eating chocolate. Uh, you saw his interview afterwards. They said, "How are you going to celebrate? You're in Vegas. You're 21." He's going to go home and eat some chocolate that he'd been saving um, some 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 Rocha Ferrero, as he put it. He had, a, he had some. <laughs> I mean, Rocha that what it was, was it? I couldn't <laughs> yeah. work out what he was saying. Okay. Yeah, he, he had some Rocha Ferrero white chocolate that he'd saved for a big day, and uh, he said it's going to taste so good. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Tom Kim. It, 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 I, I just have one concern about Tom Kim. There's this talk that he's trying to add length. Mm. We've seen many a promising player in the past, and they're uh, trying to change their swing, chasing length. I mean, he's such a good iron player, and he's such a good putter. He, you know, he can win anywhere without being the, the longest driver in the world. So I just pray to the Lord that he doesn't, um, you know, try and try and change his swing to 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 get length, and then you know, ruin his swing. Put yourself in the shoes of back in the shoes of 21-year-old Steve Palmer. You're in Vegas. You've just won a PGA <laughs> Tour title. How do you celebrate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good question. Yeah, I mean, he, he's obviously very disciplined, isn't he? Um, yeah, you don't get to be as good as he is at golf at 21 unless you are disciplined, aren't you? So he's lived his life a different way and a much more, a much better way, if I if I may say. I mean, <laughs> can, uh, while we're on the subject, Tom King, could I have a little dig at Skype for not coming on until 10 p.m.? Were you frustrated on Sunday night? Yeah, well, I, I, I'm, I'm a decade late, as I am with most things, Stephen, and I've been catching up with Broadchurch, as we spoke about last week. So I I'd, <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd strategically timed my episode to finish at nine o'clock. Expect, because he teed off at 10 uh. to nine. Yeah. Um, so I thought, right, brilliant. I'll get a few hours in at Tom Kim, see him go six clear and I'll go to bed. 
And yeah. I saw it was on at 10 and I thought, you know what? I'm not going to start watching because then I won't be able to finish. Yeah. Um, so I, went late night. I, was pr- I was just praying my first message I'd see in the morning was from you saying, you know, <laughs> we, 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 we've landed one. And, and it was. So happy it now. was, it was, it was. It was just so frustrating, though, because he was three under par for the first four holes to hit the top of the leaderboard. And we didn't see any of that. And then he comes on at, on at 10 p.m. You got Sarah Sturk and Oliver Fish, all a bit gloomy movie. And then he and he, he, he ba- makes back-to-back bogeys. The first time you see him, he makes back-to-back bogeys. And I just thought, blimey, it's going to be a long night. But um, yeah, he, then he recovered. He, he, he always looked like he was doing just enough. And then, yeah, it was, a, it was another late night. But um, I don't mind those late nights when when it's a happy ending, as you uh, as, as, as they say. Um, and we must mention his caddy, because he's got such a good rapport with his caddy, isn't he? Uh, Joe Scovron. Joe mm. Scovron, yeah, the, the, these two are a formidable duo. And um, in the, in the in the media conference afterwards, Tom Kim said that he, he doesn't um, just get golf advice off Joe Scovron. He says he's like a big brother to him now. He takes life advice off him. He's like a life coach to him. So um, um, yeah, yeah, I think these two can win majors together. Formidable yeah, duo. really excited to see where Tom Kim's journey goes. And and a nice yeah. winner, Steve. Um, of course, tipped up on last week's sweet spot. Um, Spanish Open. It was won by Matthew Pavon. Uh, I think it's his first tour win, isn't it? And and you wouldn't have thought that consider i mean he sort of hit the hit the front from early on um held his lead and was you know convincing on the sunday it was mightily impressive it was i mean he was runner up to ram last year uh, and, and you know didn't have ram to worry about so much this time um he's been a bit wobbly in contention in the past pavon i i i you know he's been brittle when he's had chances um yeah and late late it's a late maiden victory isn't it he's, he's 30 years of age um but yeah all credit to him he charged clear and he uh, got very emotional afterwards um yeah we were talking last week about ben griffin and how, how disappointing he's been in contention but yeah it, it does take time for these guys to get used to the the unique pressure of go, contending down the stretch and pavon's a good example you know it's, it's never too late it's tough with golf isn't it obviously ram you know fell short in the end but he didn't really do too much wrong. I mean, the, the, I was I watched him on the Friday and he didn't hold anything, but it wasn't, you know, very very fine margins. And and these yeah. are the things with golf. Sometimes they sometimes they drop and, and sometimes they don't. His driving was really good all week, mm. wasn't it? Oh, it? It was just a cold putter on Friday that cost him, I'd say. Um, but he, yeah, he's pumped up, wasn't he? He's pumped up to the nines. Uh, yeah, I, I don't have any regrets, but um, yeah, what one day we'll get one of these one of these trebles in. Yeah, that, yeah the, the fact that Ram was the one that let the treble down there, essentially. Uh, you imagine if DJ had one in Jeddah, we would have, <laughs> we would have been out angry men, wouldn't we? Well, we've uh, got a chance this week, Steve. So, so we will. Yeah, we've we'll got triple edges. Um, just a quick word on on the live event last week. It was won by Kepka. I think my favourite moment was seeing Cam Smith three putt from what six feet and. I think yeah. he kicked the bag, didn't he? Or, or, or lobbed his putter at the bag. It was a, a, a rather strange looking sort of emotional Cam Smith. He's very chilled and, and composed. Well, such a lot of money, such a lot of money in play last week. They didn't really publicise it like they should have done. I mean, they sort of get blasé about the, the, the big money over there, don't they? But it was $18 million on the line when he's missing those putts because the individual leader of the, uh, of the standings at the end of the season, because that was the last live event of the season for individual play um, was going to win $18 million. And, and Cam Smith was in contention for that. And yeah, you saw a, a, you know, an, an un, uncharacteristic fit of peak from the, from the Aussie there. Um, but he knew that he'd just blown his chances of, of winning $18 million. Um, but uh, yeah, Brooks Kepka um, was a successful title defence. You, know, you had two, Tom Kim and Brooks Kepka both retained titles last week. Um, our man, Dustin Johnson finished sixth, you know, shot outside the places um and taylor gooch we have to give taylor mm-hmm. gooch a, some some plaudits here because he nearly won his fourth live title of the That's season yeah. and 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 had he done so that would have been four live titles outside of america he, he's, he's a great traveler is, is gucci um you know you, have four, you imagine winning four overseas events now, he's yet to win one in, in america but he just he, he goes bananas on the road and he won that 18 million dollar prize purse uh, Jack. yeah he, he got the uh the bonus check there Beers so, on, beers on Taylor. Uh, any anything else that, 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 that caught your eye last week that we haven't touched on? Uh, Brooks Kepka was a bit harsh on Matt Wolf, isn't he? He, he, he said that his team has only three players in it. Is that um, what he said? Yeah, he, 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 Brooks Kepka hates Matthew Walsh. Says he's, he's he doesn't you know he doesn't have the mentality. He, yeah, I, I don't want to go into it. It's all very harsh. He sort of bullies Matt Wolf. Wow. Um, 
and they don't get on. I mean, I think there'd be some some changes in that team for next season. Got a way to uplift your team, mate. Saying yeah, I know. It's incredible. Exist. Well, it's incredible because his brother is obviously on the team. Chase Cook is on this team, and and Chase Cook is obviously rubbish and plays rubbish all the time. But it doesn't give him any criticism. But Matt Wolf um, is a bit inconsistent, granted, but. Um, you know, offers more than, than Chase Kepka. <laughs> Blimey. Shall we take a look at this week's tournament, Steve? Because much like we last week, I'm excited. I'm really excited because I love a triple header. And uh, yeah, yeah, we, 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 we threatened it last week, I'd say. Um, and th- this week we're going to deliver. We tickled it and we're, we're ready to punch this week. Uh, we've got the <laughs> Zozo Championship. At the I'd love season. to get in a fight with you. Is that how you do it? Is it you get in a fight situation? You... <laughs> yeah, it sort of lures them into a false sense of security, Steve. And then, <laughs> then you land the killer blow. That's good. Um, let's start with the, the Zozo then. Um, Zozo Championship at Accordia Golf. Narashino Country Club. Have I said that right, Steve? That's a bit of a mouthful, that. Yeah, yeah, you have. You have. Um, okay. Have you finished speaking? Is it my turn? I was going no, to no, 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 speak I'm, a bit more. I just want to take this jumper. I've made a, made an error. I well, thought, you, I thought you, winter had arrived. I've put on a massively thick item of clothing here, and now I'm sweating. Have you I'm turned gonna, the heating on in, in the shed? No, 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 I've turned the heating off. I've just completely misjudged the weather weather in the shed today. I'm going to take this off if I may. So, take that uh, off. Talk about, be... talk about how you do fights. Yeah, I'll uh, read the market but, leaders. I think that's the last time you were in a fight. That would be a good one. The last time I was in a fight. I don't think I've ever been in a physical puncher. I have once been kicked and sort of hit from behind at Portman Road once. Have you? Um, that wasn't very pleasurable. Well, um, I saw those Birmingham fans were quite unsavoury at uh, Norwich the other day, weren't they? I was a bit worried you were in that restaurant when they all went in there all going, being cr- crazy. Right, I'm, I'm ready now, son. You ready? Right. Talk yeah. us through the Zozo and, and, and I hope <gasps> you're cool when you're composed. I am, and we are, you're right, we're at Accordia Golf Narashino Country Club, Chiba, Japan, 7,079 yards, par 70, only three par fives, five par threes. It staged the inaugural Zozo in 2019. Tiger Woods served up an exhibition of iron play that week. You might you might remember that one. My God, we miss those Tiger Woods exhibitions of iron play. It was, it was glorious. But then, unfortunately, COVID-19 struck. The 2020 Zozo had to relocate to Sherwood Country Club, California, IA. Uh, thankfully, we've been back at Narashino for the last two Zozos. Tight, tree-lined, numerous dog legs, water in play on five holes, and big greens that are actually small greens because there are two greens on each hole. Oh, um, one of those ones, you, okay. Yes, yeah, one of those ones. So only one green obviously is used each day, and then you get a free drop off the other one that's not being used. There's a lot of courses in Japan that, that have that system. There's there's one of those near me, Steve, and it becomes awfully dangerous because you know you you're not you haven't got Hideki Matsuyama behind you. You've got sort of Dave from Deer and slashing <laughs> six irons in there, and and if it comes, <laughs> yeah, it becomes if you walk out alive, that's a good thing. If you, if you shoot a good score, that's another. But um, right, yeah. let's take a look at the the market leader. Jean de Chauflet, fifteen to two. Colin Morikawa, eleven. Sunjay Im, twelve to one. Ricky Fowler, 14s. Hideki Matsuyama, 16 to 1. 18 to 1, Min Woo Lee, who I saw one uh, last week. Um, bigger the rest. Steve, um, how many selections for the Zozo? Three selections. Okay. Three selections. And if you're looking to sort of build thoughts yourself, two of the best iron players in the game have won two of the three Zozos at Narashino, Tiger Woods and Hideki Matsuyama. Accurate approach play, I think, is the key to success. And we've got two windy days this week. I must mention that. First two days, very windy um, before it calms down at the weekend. OK, Steve, looking forward to uh, to these. Who's the main headline selection? It is Sungjae Im at 14 to 1, who I besmirched last week by saying he was still dancing in the streets after the, the, the gold medal at uh, the Asian Games. Yeah, because I, I, I wrongly assumed that if he was going to play anywhere last week, it would be in the Shriners where he, he, he won that he won that event two years ago. Um, when I didn't see him in that field, I thought, oh, he must be having the week off. But this lad, so loyal to his country, likes spending as much time as possible in, in Korea. And he teed up last week on the Korean tour. Uh, Did he? OK. The, yeah, yeah, the Genesis Championship. Um, likes to support his home circuit whenever his schedule allows. Even when his schedule doesn't allow, he supports his home circuit. Do you remember he went back before the USPGA, week before the USPGA this year? He's playing on the Korean tour. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, he, and he won that event. He won that event. And he nearly won again last week. He was in a three-man playoff last week for this Genesis. Lost to Sangyun Park. 
Uh, but second place last week, a continuation of the form he showed in that Asian Games that we mentioned last week that, that took place during Ryder Cup week. In won the silver medal in the individual competition in that, but crucially won the, uh, the, the, the gold medal in the team competition. Him and teammates uh, Siwoo Kim are now exempt from that, that military service that they would otherwise have had to do. And, and, and that gold medal means freedom. Sung Jae Im, I've got a direct quote from Sung Jae Im here. I think I should be able to stay focused even more on the PGA Tour. I think this will help me so much mentally. Um, oh, wow. OK. So I, I love yeah. the amount of kind of wiggles there. <laughs> I think it's important. I think it's important. So, yeah, he, he, he wasn't doing bad, was he? With, with the spectre of military service of, hovering above him, he was doing really well. Two PGA Tour titles, two Corn Ferry Tour titles, runner up in the 2020 Masters. But I think at the age of 25, he's going to go from strength to strength now. Um, and he's he's nicely acclimated. A lot of these people are just jetting over. A lot of them played mm. last week in Las Vegas, jetting over. Sung Joy Im, Asian Games were in China. He was playing in South Korea last week. He's in Japan now, nicely settled in Asia. And we know he loves Narashino. 2019, the inaugural Zozo, he was third. Tiger Woods and Hideki Matayama, the only players that beat him that week. 29th on his only subsequent visit. So, yeah, back-to-back South Korean winners on the PGA Tour. Thank you very much. Look at, do you know off the top of your head the last time that happened? Has it ever happened? I would suggest that's never happened. Yeah, okay. I'd love to be proved wrong. So yeah, that's, just... that, that's everyone. That's the viewers' homework this week. Let us know. Yeah. has there ever been back-to-back South Korean winners on the PGA Tour? I'm sure there has yeah. been at some point. I'm sure there has so. been. Okay, 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 okay. Bold claim, bold claim. Um, I, yeah, yeah, we'll look into that. Yeah, I love Sung Jai Steve. You know, not only is he, a, you know, very happy chap, great golf. I love people that love where they're from i think yeah. a lot of people now think it's cool to kind of dismiss where they're from and actually i think yeah. that's a good thing to love yeah yeah love. i agree with you yeah, he always gets back there he loves going back there and you know he doesn't need to play on the korean tour now does he but you know he's no big time charlie he goes back and supports his, his home circuit you know, yeah yeah I, I think sung jai is one of the greatest people in the world <laughs> behind tom kim um sung jai main selection for the zozo who's up next Next best, Cameron Davis at 20 to 1. He likes being called Cam these days, officially changed his name to Cam on, on, on PJ Tour websites and whatnot. But I'm going to call him Cameron in the hope that he takes himself seriously this week because this lad is an underachiever. He needs to take himself more seriously. His golf swing is technical perfection. He's got effortless power, one of the best ball strikers on the PJ Tour. But he's only won one PJ Tour title. I think his mantelpiece will be bulging by the time he hangs up his spikes. His career has been a steady progression, Jack. He won the Australian Open in 2017. He won on the Corn Ferry Tour in 2018. He won on the PGA Tour in 2021. And this year he's done well in some massive events. He was sixth in the Players' Championship, fourth in the US PGA Championship. And he's banging form coming to the Zozo. Five of his last six tournaments have resulted in a top 10 finish. All PGA Tour events. He was third in the Fortinet Championship a month ago, seventh in the Shriners on Sunday, and he'll be licking his lips at the weather forecast. Yeah, a bit of wind, you know, no fear for the for the wind. You know, most of the Aussies love the wind. He's no exception. Um, and he was 29th in his Narashino debut last year. I wouldn't want to back any debutants um, this week, but um, he's got experience. And just if I could just put a little bit of icing on the cake, he, he played well in, in a prestigious amateur event in Thailand in 2013, the, 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 the Namura Cup. Um, so he, yeah, he doesn't mind a trip to Asia. Does how, so how do you find out nuggets of info like that? You know, amateur events from a decade ago. Well, Is that just readily a, available info. I'm I'm obsessed with I'm obsessed with golfers, and unfortunately, um, probably need to become less obsessed with golfers because I had a, had a, had a, last Sunday the kids were um, the kids were taken away to be looked after elsewhere. So it's supposed to be a day of romance with the with the wife, and uh, unfortunately, I had Live Golf Jeddah on, um, on 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 Live Golf Plus. And then I had a Sky Go. I had uh, the final stage of the Spanish Open. So I, I, I had two, 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 two going. Yeah, yeah. You've got to be careful on your screen time, haven't you? Did, did you, you know, did you go out for a nice meal or something? I hope yeah, yeah. Like, well, I guess you, I guess with the PGA Tour being on late, you had a little window of opportunity in the middle yes. of the day, didn't you? Yes, there, yes, yes. There was a window of opportunity. You're right, Jack. You're right. You should, we actually went to the one place where you can't take uh, devices um, to a spa. There was a, a little, Ooh. little bit. They spent an hour in the spa, so I, I couldn't justify taking two devices into the jacuzzi. Uh, I thought about it. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. So what are we talking about? Yeah, yeah. Cameron Davis, great chance. I don't know how we got from Cam Davis to to romance. You know, he might provide some some love for you this weekend. He's easy. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's a tall, handsome Aussie lad. 
Um, but um, yeah, I don't want to romance him. I want to romance the wife, but I want to I want to back Cameron Davis this week. Good. I don't. I, I think probably the worst thing to be. I mean, it's probably worst thing to be called in life. To be called an underachiever is is quite yeah. a low blow. I think. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. But. I hope I mean, he kind of pins that up on the dressing room wall and says, I'm about to prove Steve Palmer wrong. All right in this case. I, yeah, I, I mean it as a compliment. If you can name a player with a better golf swing than Cam Davis, I, um, I, yeah, I, yeah, I give you a pat on the back. There, there aren't many out there. You could throw me a, an Adam Scott or a Charles Schwartz, or, um, but I will throw you a Cam Davis back. I mean, he's actually got a great golf swing left-handed as well. He's ambidextrous. Really? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he can hit balls well left-handed as well. He's, he's technically, yeah, that's why I'm calling him an underachiever because with a swing like that, you should, your mantelpiece should already be bulging. But he's still a young lad, and give him time, it's, it's all going to come good. Cam or Cameron Davis joins Sung Jae M on the list for the Zozo Championship. Who's the third and final pick? It is Takumi Kanaya. Mm. 70 to 1 is out there. The Japanese players on home turf, very tempted. I'm sure one of them will pop up on the leaderboard on Sunday. I think Kanaya, the best value of the lot. This is an ever improving 25 year old. He doesn't get the fanfare of the other Japanese youngsters for some reason. I don't know why. They all go bananas for your Kaita Nakajimas, your Tiger Semikawas. Um, yeah, but Takumi Kanaya is, is as good as them. You know, he was world number one amateur for 55 weeks. Wow. He. He, yeah, he, and he won on the Japan Tour when he was still an amateur in 2019. Not just any old event, the Taiyo Masters, I'll have you know. Uh, so an amazing start to his career before he's even a professional. Then he won the Dunlop Phoenix in 2020. You know, you know how good that golf tournament is. He's won two events on the Japan Tour this year. He's also won an Asian Tour event in February. The likes of Brooks Kepka, Wacom Neiman and Sergio Garcia were, were in that event. A lot of the livers were in that. Um, Kanaya has got Japan Tour form figures of 2 7 1 16 16 3 27. He's in great nick, well worth backing at juicy each way prices for this. He was seventh on his Narashino debut in 2021. Um, we were on him that year at 66 to 1. I remember it well. Um, you know, agonizingly missed out on the place, but I think he can get a place. I think he can get a place this time. I think we can call this chap almost a sweet spot regular now, can't we? I mean, you've tipped him up a, a good few times over the last sort of eighteen months. I do, I do like his, I do like Takumi Kanaya, and I think he's being disrespected this week, and I think it's because his style of play isn't as flashy as those other players I mentioned. You know, he's, he's a steady Eddie, this fella, uh, but that's what you need at Narashino. You're you're opposing Shofle, Morikawa, Fowler, Matsuyama. Any reasons for, for that? You've also got Minwoo Lee in there, who won in well, he Macau won. Open. Yeah, Macau yeah, yeah. Open. yeah, 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 yeah. Going to be a bit of a contrast, but for Minwoo Lee, because that was such an easy track. He was he was thirty under par, I think, on that one. But you know, Narashino will test him. Yeah, you can't back him all, Jack. There's obviously loads of dangers, but um, yeah, I think those three are the best value options on on the card. Should we head over to uh, Andalusia? I'd love to. Me too. Let's do exactly that. Uh, where are we at? What can we expect, Steve? Real Club de Golf Sota Grande, San Roque, Andalucía, Spain. 7,099 yards, par 72, four par fives. Taken over from Valderrama. Mm. Um, Valderrama, unfortunately, defected to the to, to live this year. Um, we were yeah. all pretty... Yeah, it was a bit of a... It was a, it was a tough... That's tilt. a shame. It's a pill to swallow that, wasn't it? Mm. But uh, Real Club de Golf looks fantastic as well, though. Designed by Robert Trent Jones in 1964. It co-hosted the European Tour Qualifying School finals uh, a few times, most recently in 2001. It's a private members club that we haven't seen since. Undulating terrain, quite exposed. A few man-made lakes. It looks a lot like the courses you find in, in Florida. Um, mm. Fast greens. Um, yeah, it looks fantastic, this course, as I say, but the weather forecast doesn't... Um, doesn't look fantastic. We've got some showers expected on day one, as well as strong winds. Breezy on Friday as well, and then it'd be calm over the weekend. Um, wide fairways, greens well guarded. So accurate approach play is the key to this one as well. OK, some some variables to try and get through here. Let's take a look at the market leaders. Ryan Fox and Wyndham Clark, your joint 11 to 1 favourites for this one. Adrian Moronk, who we know all about, 20 to 1. Jordan Smith, who's been in some good form, 22 to 1. Alexander Bjork, 25s. Rasmus Hoygaard, 28s. Bigger the rest. Um, Steve, how many selections? Uh, five. The the Masters? Five selections, all at healthy prices. OK, so avoiding the top of the market. Who's first on your list? Nathan Kimsey, 45 to 1. 
who was certainly not contending out of nowhere in Madrid last week. I was sorely tempted to play him last week. He's full of form and confidence. I see him building on that uh, strong effort in Madrid by winning the Andalusia Masters. He was third last week, 18 under par, bogey free at the weekend. This is a 30-year-old at the peak of his powers. Over the last 15 months, he's taken his game to a new level. He won his first Challenge Tour event in July last year. Then he won the Challenge Tour Grand Final in Spain at the end of the season. He settled straight away on the DP World Tour, 13th in the Joburg Open, 11th in the Alfred Dunhill, and then more recently, 10th in Himmerland, a playoff loser in the Barbasol Championship, you know, a co-sanctioned PJ Tour, DP World Tour event. And his last four tournaments, he's been rock solid as well. 28th at Wentworth, 14th in the French Open. Kimsey's in, in, in control. Um, we've got a bit of ice in to put on the Kimsey KK as well. You know, I mentioned now this venue has been likened to those in Florida. It's not just me saying it. Others have, have made that observation. We, we, yeah, we know Kimsey likes Florida courses. He won the Terracotta Invitational in Florida. The Terracotta Invitational in 2013. What a, what a, what a cup name that is. It is, isn't it? Yeah, well, yeah. That, that is a, that's a good quality amateur event. Justin Thomas won that in 2010. Kimsey won it in 2013. Yeah, I think he's going to take a shine to this week's venue. How how big, Steve, is the jump between these kind of, you know, challenge tours to main tour, Corn Ferry to, you know, PGA Tour? Because I see a lot of, you know, club pros around here. They go on to like the clutch tour, which is kind of the first yeah. step up and they struggle. So like these are elite golfers taking the next step and they find it so difficult. Is it a similar step up when you get to these levels or not so much? Well, well, yeah, Kimsey. I mean, Challenge Tour is good now. You know, Challenge yeah. Tour is Challenge Tour is good. Corn Ferry Tour has always been well respected. I think Corn Ferry Tour obviously stronger than Challenge Tour, but you know, I'm not disrespecting the Challenge Tour anymore. Some great players on that. Yeah, you know, the, the strength in depth in in in, in golf is, is is enormous now, isn't it? Um, you know, which is why you know me and Tommy Tiger are sort of reflecting on whether, whether what career path he should take because it's very hard to penetrate the golf professional game now. Uh, mm. Need a lot of luck on the way. You, know, you could be a fantastic golfer and it just not work out for you. I mean, I was looking when I was looking through those amateur results, some of those tournaments I've been mentioning near the terracottas and whatnot. Um, Bud Cooley, do you remember Bud Cooley? Yeah. I, I spotted his name and I thought Bud Cooley. He, he, he looked amazing when he first yeah. came on the scene, didn't he? Um, you know, I thought I had him down as a potential superstar, and then you know, a little injury niggle here and there, you lose your card, you never get it back, you're gone forever. Um, yeah, golf's a tough nut to crack, Jack. What would you say the easiest sport is to make it make it pro is? Blimey, you're throwing some tough questions. I'm just I'm just thinking for old um, Tommy Tiger's well, sporting it's, career. It's got to be the most minority one going. It probably Kabaddi or something. You've got <laughs> you've got to pick or badminton. I don't know, like the most obscure ones, isn't it? Uh, yeah. It's, if you're going to be contesting eighteen million dollar, you know, live season winner prizes, mm. it's no wonder the whole world yeah money 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 was the romance gone. As I so, wrote my, uh, so what, what, what's the next steps for Tommy Tiger if it's not golf? What we think? Oh, snooker. 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 Okay. Um, snooker. snooker, yeah. I've been practising snooker, but um, yeah, it can be quite a hostile crowd down the snooker club. <laughs> um, the, 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 wife's, the wife's not overly impressed that I'm getting him hanging out at the snooker club age four. Um, but, not, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we digress. We digress. Okay, second pick for the Andalusia <laughs> Masters. The second pick, keeping the faith. Marcus Helikilde. Okay. Uh, 50 to 1 available. Yeah, you know, I mentioned the Miss Birdie part on 18 on, on Sunday. It was a gut buster for me, but it, yeah, he'll take it as ninth place. Another strong performance. Uh, this is a three time Challenge Tour winner. He's settled nicely in the higher grade now. We mentioned last week one of those Challenge Tour victories came in Spain. His record generally in Spain is, is incredible. I think this week's venue sets up really well for him. And like Kimsey, Helikilde has been strongly threatened in. The maiden title. He was runner up in the career championship, fourth in the ISPS hander, 13th in the European Masters, 25th at Wentworth. I think one day soon, Heli Kilda will give the bookmakers hell. I think it's worth noting that Steve, you're obviously quite punchy with your with your you know gambling. Um you, you can pick your poison when it comes to place terms. Because you know, you've obviously said yeah. there are missed putts cost you dearly with Heli Kilda. You know, yeah. bookmakers are offering, well, I mean, I'm just looking through this week, up to kind of 
nine places, maybe more. In you time. are absolutely right. You yeah. are absolutely right. And I think somebody, sensible punters, would have made money out of that treble last yeah. week. There would have been oh, a absolutely. way of there would have been a way of making money out of that treble. I was just I was on court I was on quarters the five on on, on my trebles. A um, little bit too ambitious as always, but um, you're right. I mean, you can get seventh the ten quite easily. You know, would have won money on Hedekill last week seventh the ten. Um, there's there's ways and means. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's not just about um, looking at the main markets. If you fancy getting a few extra places in your in your in your locker, then uh, it's available for you. Absolutely. Uh, who's next on the list, Steve? It's another sweet spot regular now, Alex Fitzpatrick, who is also mm. available at fifty to one. Another player I feel confident will make a DP World Tour breakthrough soon. I believe in Alex Fitzpatrick, and much more importantly, Alex Fitzpatrick believes in Alex Fitzpatrick <laughs> because I saw a I saw an interview where he's saying that the twenty twenty five Ryder Cup is a target of his, an express okay. target of his. He want he wants to play he wants to play for Europe with his brother in New York in a couple of years time. And I, you know, I like that chutzpah. You know, it's entirely <laughs> feasible. It's entirely feasible that that happens. He's a former world number four amateur, improving all the time. He was 17th in the Open Championship in July. He won on the Challenge Tour in August. Then he was runner up in the DP World Tour uh, in the ISPS Hander. Fifth at Cran 20th last week in the Spanish Open. Uh, tidy warm-up spin and approach players Fitzpatrick's strength. I mentioned that I think it's the key this week. Um, he's he's eighth on the DP World Tour stats for strokes gained on approach. I think this week's track is is ideal for him. And okay. actually, I, I have, sorry, I have some icing to put on this cake as well. I'm sorry. God, there's a lot I, of icing today, Steve. I know I've probably overloaded the icing already, but I've got a little bit of ice similar to the icing that we put on the the Kimsey cake. Actually, Fitzpatrick enjoys Florida-like courses. Uh, he, he won. He won the 2021 Valspar Collegiate event, a uh, prestigious amateur event, um, which is held in Florida. He won that by three shots. So when we talk about, you know, Florida like course. So you said about the man made kind of lakes and stuff. Is there anything else that, you know, is, is a lot like Florida? Uh, the, the grasses are similar as well. I yeah, see. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you basically when you're watching it, if you didn't have any prior knowledge, you'd probably think you're watching an event in Florida. Try it this week. Get yourself into that. <laughs> That zone. I, well, I, to be fair, when, when, once Thursday morning comes around, I've usually forgotten everything you know useful that you've said anyway. So I'm, I'm sure I will be in that situation. You're probably watching Broadchurch. When you sound like you're addicted to Broadchurch, you're one yeah, of the yeah, few, few yeah. people in the world who hasn't seen all of that, and you're a bit behind schedule on that. I'm getting towards the end of it. I'm 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 going kind of old school with it. I'm, I'm eking it out. I don't I don't like binging TV series. Is it? I like Very doing sensible. one a night maximum, just to you know you go to bed and you're wondering, oh, who killed that person? Blah, Very blah. sensible. Very sensible. Well, yeah, there's a lot of bingers out there and uh, it's not advisable, is it? I think binging is healthy with anything, is it, TV? I think you make a very good point, Jay. I think you... <laughs> binge, life coaching winners, here. binge on winners this week. That'd be oh, nice. Oh, yeah, that's one thing. Yeah, yeah, I like this. I like two the way you go. think. Two to go in the Andalusia? Two, two to go, two to okay. go. Go on then. Daniel, Daniel, Daniel Hillier. Another <laughs> 50 to one shot. We're binging on 50 to one shots. I can see uh, a 25 year old New Zealander. He won the British Masters by two shots in July. DP World Tour breakthrough. He won twice on the Challenge Tour before that. The first of those wins came in Spain, where he edged out Marcus Helikilde, uh on the Costa Brava. Uh, Hilia, brilliant amateur, always destined for greatness. And his career is really picking up pace now. He's fifth in the KLM Open, third in the BMW International just prior to his. British Masters win. Then he was 12th in the Irish Open. Then he had a shoulder strain, which caused a few problems. It was bothering him at Wentworth, had to withdraw there. Then he missed the cut by a shot in the French Open. But little break, normal service resumed last week. Fitness back, form back, open with a 71 in Madrid, but then roared up the leaderboard rounds of 67, 66, 66. Hillier, massive danger man. Any Hillier icing or on to the next? Uh, no, no, that's 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 that cake complete. <laughs> a, a clean, fresh cake. Uh, <laughs> Just a spongy, nice. a spongy Daniel Hillier, and then we got one at a massive price. Go on then, to tempt me. Who, who's who, who are we going for here? One at a wrong price, dare I say? I don't like to criticise bookmakers. It's not an easy game to play. Um, but Sean Crocker, one hundred and fifty to one. Sean yeah. Crocker. Sean Crocker can be back to one hundred and fifty to one, Jack. Um, and I keep banging on about how this course looks and feels like like a florida venue yeah well who better to take advantage of that than a man who lives in florida um mr sean crocker 
um, had a really strong amateur career. He's been full time on the DP World Tour from 2019 onwards. He won his maiden title last year in the Hero Open. This year, runner up in the Scandinavian Mixed, 14th in the BMW International, 19th in the Scottish Open, 10th in the Barracuda Championship. So in the summer, he was really finding his A game and unfortunately fell down some stairs prior to the Czech Masters. Oh, my goodness. Fell down some stairs prior to the Czech Masters, had to withdraw from that tournament, took him a while to regain fitness and form, but he closed with a 67 for 44th place in the Dunhill Links. And then last week, really encouraging, he closed with rounds of 68, 66 and 68 for 20th place in Madrid. I would suggest Crocker is fit and, and, and firing again. And he's got the tee to green class to, to make a mincemeat of uh, Club de Golf Sutter Gland there. Sean Crocker, I haven't heard his name for He's best mates with Horsfield, isn't he, Sean Crocker? Yeah, yeah, they are good. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's strange in elite sport how many people you hear injured from stair kind of related activity. You, you, you would think, particularly if you, you kind of, you know, in a team event, you should ban your your players from living in houses strictly bungalows. I'd say you, see, you make it. Yeah, you make you're making some good points today, Jack. I'm very I'm very impressed. That do you remember when Dustin Johnson had to pull out from the Masters? Yeah, as he fell down some stairs before the Masters. I mean, yeah, yeah. You just rule out stairs. There must be yeah. plenty of. You know, when you've got unlimited funds, like certainly Dustin Johnson has, just buy the biggest bungalow in in the town. Yeah, good yeah. point. Good point. Um, well made. You, you mentioned, well, we, we've seen you've gone for big prices throughout this tournament, Steve. I mean, Ryan Fox, Wyndham Clark, that's a, I was surprised to see his name on the on the, on the the entry sheet. Um, Adrian yeah. Moronk, who you're a big fan of. Uh, why are you not, you know, going at the top of the market here? Ryan Fox is the most tempting of those three because Ryan Fox very good in the wind and, um, uh, you yeah, know, former Daniel Lynx winner. I could see Ryan Fox playing well, but it's just that forecast yeah, I think we're going to need a little bit of luck with the tee times, Jack, because okay, uh, okay. The, the, in both tournaments this week, the first two days, there's loads of wind around. And I don't want to be playing short prices, um, uh, certainly, and th there's more wind in, in, in the Spanish one. And, and and yeah, if you get Ryan Fox out in 40 mile an hour winds and you're on at 14 to 1, are oh, you going to give yourself a little slap around the chops? Um, mm. you, well, I've never aren't. advised that. I think that's slightly harsh on, on one mm. side. Are we looking for early tea times or, or later in the day, or, or do we not know that? Um, I, I, I can't remember, to be honest. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I just remember looking, thinking we have to be careful with the short prices here. Yeah. Approach, approach with caution. Okay, that's the Andalusian master. Should we move on to Live Miami? Yeah, triple header. Um, Live Miami at Trump National Doral. You're going to have to explain what's going on here, Steve, because I, I I did some kind of reading yesterday and I still can't quite wrap my head around what's going on. So we've got a Live Golf team event, haven't we? We have. We have. It's the second Live Golf team championship, Miami. We're at the same venue, Trump National Doral Golf Club. Uh, 7,701 yards now, extended a little bit from last year. Par 72, four par fives. You know, the, the old famous Blue Monster. I mean, it used, to be, it used to be called the Blue Monster in its PGA Tour days. You know, water hazards everywhere here. Um, it hosted a regulation PGA Tour event from 1962 to 2006. Then the WGC Cadillac Championship came here from 2007 to 2016. Jill Hans remodeled the layout in 2014. So basically, if you're looking at course form, there's a few players in, in this that have played in, in all those. But 2014 onwards is what you want to be looking at um, because the course is the same as it as it was from there. Um, and we were on the four aces last year. Do you not remember? Did you back the four aces? Yeah, no, I, I, I do remember backing so, something. Yeah, 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 yeah. We had the four aces last year and they just managed to get the job done. They edged out punch in a, in a thrilling finale. <laughs> Team punch. Team punch. <laughs> changed their name since it's all very confusing team, is, punch, yeah. team punch doesn't exist anymore they're, they're, they're now known as the rippers <laughs> um so um yeah yeah I'll, I'll take you through the gory details we've got 12 teams of four go into post the top four seeds get a bye to the weekend action the other eight teams play for a place in the quarterfinals so match play golf two singles matches and one foursomes on Saturday, we have the quarterfinal, same deal, two singles matches and one foursomes. And then on Sunday, there's four teams left. They all play 18 holes of stroke play. So we switch Got formats it. to stroke play and the total team score determines the result. Uh, we start at 6.15 p.m. UK and Ireland time on Friday. Watch on the Live Golf Plus app, as I mentioned. Don't get carried away. You know, screen time responsibly. Um, and uh, yeah, enjoy. It's a tough tournament, this. 
This it is, is the, a tough tournament. Well, you, you found the winner last year, though, so hopefully we can do the same again. We've got the four aces who are favourites, seven to two. Crushers, four to one, alongside the range goats. You have to kind of, you feel, feel like you're reading off sort of a, a meme sheet here, don't you? <laughs> and then Team Talk, 11 to two, bigger the rest. You've also got Team Fireballs in there. Um, Steve, how, how are we playing this from a, from a tipping perspective? I think since, well, we've got one selection to cut okay. a long story short. Uh, and, and that is team talk, team talk, talk, okay. 11 to two. I, I think sensible punters have to be narrowing this field down from 12 to four. You know, it's such a massive advantage to be seeded. You know, the mm. top four seeds already through to the weekend action. The seeds just have to win one match as a collective. And then they get through to that stroke play shootout on Sunday. And the seeded teams get to choose their opponents. So, um, so they they can watch all the Friday action and then oh, decide who that decide who they want to face. Yeah, the number one seed gets to pick first, so on and so forth. And also, we must mention the weather forecast for Friday will have the seeded teams laughing their socks off. You know, there's a thunderstorm threat for Friday. They may have to move the tee times around. So so you've got all the the, the, the lesser light teams worrying about the tee times. When are we going to get on there? Be a bit windy, blah blah blah. You've got the seeded teams just l- in bed. You know, relaxing, don't have to worry about a thing. Um, and then over the weekend, the weather gets good. When the CD teams come out, the weather improves. Um, so for me, the four seeds, which we'll, we'll mention now, four aces, crushers, talk, and range goats. They're the, they're, they're, they're the seed. Yeah, range goats, no mugs. They've got, they got, they got seeds. And it's a tough choice be- to pick between those four. Um, and I was tempted by four aces again. As you say, we... We were on them last year. Dustin Johnson and Patrick Reed are both former Trump national champions. Mm. And they both they both won after the Hans redesign that I mentioned. So I really respect the four aces. But every score counts on Sunday. And I th- I don't think the four aces are going to be able to rely on Pat Perez. Pat Perez did really well last year. You know, surprisingly well. It was a real team effort from the four aces in that Sunday stroke play. But Perez has been in absolutely dire form lately. I think he's a, a serious weak, weak link for the four aces. Um, so I'm going for the seeded team, which I think has no massive weaknesses. Um, and, and the bonus is that this is the biggest price of those four. Uh, you went through the prices yeah, there. Yeah. Oh, and you, 11 to 2 talk. Yeah? Mm. 11, 11 to 2 talk. Um, yeah, and and, and, and I, I don't know why the layers make talk. Uh, just, just talk, remind, let, let, remind the viewers who, who, who is in Team Talk. Team Talk, Team Talk comprises two of the most dependable tee to green operators on the circuit, Wackham Neiman and Mito Pereira. Yeah. You know, great friends, great friends, and two of the most improved players on the circuit for me, Sebastian Munoz and David Puig. Mm. Um, yeah, Munoz has posted four top four finishes on the Live Circuit this year. Puig tied for third place in Liv Greenbrier, been in red hot, hot form on the Asian tour, as we mentioned last week. Um, and four races won last year with every player carding either a 70 or a 71. You know, that was the route to success on Sunday, just everyone carding a solid score. You, okay. had, punch, you had punch. Cameron Smith played the best golf of anyone last last Sunday, Sunday last year. Shot 65, but all his teammates let him down. It's all about all-round solidity. And I think talk of the side that will have that this year um and bear in mind please bear in mind four aces is not the same lineup as ad last year taylor mm-hmm. gooch was a four ace last year taylor taylor gooch signed for range goats in the close season massive big money move um gooch going from four aces to range goats and peter uline replaced gooch as a as a four ace and Uline card in a 75 on the sunday of, of this event last year so yeah it's, it's, it's a weakened four aces um, tough event. So yeah, I got talk beating four races. It's exciting, <laughs> isn't it? It's, exciting. It's, very, it's very exciting. I, I pot, potentially more confused now than I was at the start. Um, I think <laughs> that's a good thing. Lots of information to take in, Steve. There we go. Team talk, eleven to two to win Live Golf Miami. That's the team event, Steve. I think that's um, everything rounded up. What what have you got to yeah. look forward to this week? I mean, spas and winning tips last week. It was living a living a good life at the moment. Well, it's just I just I'm very very focused on this each way treble. You know, I'd like to nominate another one because I, I you know I got a little taste for the treble last week. It didn't come off, but I think this week we will have another go. Um, so for, what is what's the so each way treble this week then? Well, we'll have Nathan Kimsey, Sung Jae Im, and Talk. 
Um, we've, we've, we've taught the talk. Now it's time to walk the walk. So, so um, it's a unique combination, that, isn't it? I it is. It's, it's, it's crazy, <laughs> isn't it? It's absolutely crazy. But that, that's an enor- enormous price. I mean, as I say, we're going to need a little bit of luck from the Lord with the tea times in the in the um, in Spain and uh, and Japan. But if we get a little bit of luck from the Lord on the tea times, I think it's entirely feasible. We've been on best behaviour, haven't we? Um, so hopefully we get some some good. Is that how it, <laughs> is that how yeah, it works? Yeah, of course yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Put yeah. good in the world, and some some good will come back. I think something like that. I'll get muddled up with Father Christmas there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Potentially. Um, Steve, run us through all of the selections before we uh, say goodbye. Uh, starting with the Zozo. Sunjay Im, Cameron Davis, Takumi Kanaya, uh, Andalusia Masters, Nathan Kimsey, Marcus Hillikide, Alex Fitzpatrick, Daniel uh, Hillier. And Liv went that went early there. Liv Miami team event. <laughs> Sean Crocker got left behind there. <laughs> talk. Talk is cheap. Very good. Sorry, Sean Crocker. I'm sure you're watching. Very sorry. Um, Steve, thank you. Uh, We'll be back next week to take a look at the Qatar Masters. Until then, gamble safely, responsibly and enjoy the golf. See you later. Bye bye.